Hey guys, Mike here. You're watching TA Outdoors and thanks for tuning in. So I've had a lot of questions lately on the channel about what's basically the best uh, backpack that you can use for bushcraft, hiking, camping and the like. So um, because of all those questions I thought I'd do a video on pretty much every backpack that I have, or not quite every backpack, but backpacks that I've used quite regularly. So I'm going to give you a rundown of uh, the day packs that I use first, or have used in the past, um, and then I'll go through some of my longer term, you know, overnighter backpacks where I'd stay for maybe one or two nights or three nights or longer trips. It's going to be quite a detailed video so you might want to get comfy guys uh, but hopefully some of you out there may be able to pick up a tip or two because at the end of the day there is no perfect backpack, there is just the backpack that suits you the best. When I mention uh, brands in this video it's not because I'm sponsored by them, I've paid for absolutely every single one of these backpacks, I'm not sponsored by any of the companies, uh, it's just because I believe in the brand and I genuinely think it's very good quality, hence why I bought them. Hope you enjoy the video, let's start with the first pack. So uh, just before I grab the first pack that I'll go through, just to show you the range of packs that I've got, this one over here on the right is more of a hiking backpack, okay, hence why it's a different colour, and I'll explain that in a minute, but that's more of a hiking backpack. Uh, this is another, the day pack I'm using at the moment, this is one of the, a lot of these are uh, military surplus backpacks, this is a Dutch Air Force one. This one's a day pack as well, again this is a German military one. Then there's my overnight bag which is the snug pack one, snug pack stamina. So these are the bigger bags now. And then there's the very famous, very popular Swedish LK35, again a military surplus one. But we'll start with one of the day packs first. So first up is the BW German mountain rucksack. Um, this is a military surplus one, but you can get them available uh, also on Amazon actually. And I'll pop an Amazon link in the video description below. These are actually very, very good value for money. They're only cheap, especially the Amazon ones. The military ones are, the actual military surplus ones are slightly more expensive, but the Amazon ones are, are just as good really. Um, and all it is, it's kind of a canvas uh, material at the top here. I've actually made some modifications to this and I've included my own straps here. And this is for my bedroll. So if I did want to do an overnighter, I can do an overnighter with this. I've just got these little brass buckles here, and they're for an authentic purpose really. There's, there's, they do have weight to them, but it's nothing much. Um, and that just allows me to, I don't, it doesn't have to be a bedroll, it could be a wall blanket, it could be a sleeping bag, but either way, that's an extra addition there, which I've made use of. It does have two D loops at the top, which you can clip carabiners to, or tie paracord to, but I've made use of these as well uh, with this nylon web strapping. Overall, I believe it's a 30 litre bag, or 25 to 30 litre bag. Uh, so nice and small, day pack size, and a very easy, simple to click, open lid. Now the lid, as you can see under here, is waterproof, completely waterproof, uh, which is handy, obviously, to stop your stuff inside getting wet. To open it, I've actually just modded it again a bit, I've got a little bit of red deer antler there at the end, just so I can find the toggle nice and easily when I do want to open it. There's just a little plastic stopper here, which you just squeeze, like most backpacks, pull. I've got a bit of cow bone as well, which you pull, and that then loosens it up, up the top here. And this is a bucket pouch, so it's just a single pocket inside, but it's nice and big, as you can see. Over at the back here, what I've done here is I've put foam in just to keep the shape of the bag because a lot of backpacks you'll find will just crumple on themselves when you haven't got much gear in and generally with a day pack you don't pack too much gear so it can crumble in on itself and it is quite annoying sometimes and I find it affects the pressure on your back so I like to have a nice shape to the bag just to create even pressure across when you do have some weight in there so I've added that bit of foam which also adds to the waterproof ability of if the front of the bag got wet here there's no waterproof material this side which means that this mat this uh, foam mat basically protects your, your, your gear inside from being wet. There is a second pocket at the back here, which I've had installed another foam mat, and that's just to keep it your back supported and keep a nice straight back. And again, it improves the structure of the backpack. But this can just simply be opened by these two bits of Velcro here. And I can take this mat out, and it's nice and square, and I can use this for a kneeling pad should I want to be lighting a fire in the, in the rain and not get you know, my knees completely soaked. So generally I try to go with things that have multiple purposes. So this backpack, has, that pad in that backpack has multiple purposes. This front one has multiple purposes. On each side of the backpack, there is a side pouch, again, with just a clip, simple plastic clip. And the lid of the pouch, which is very handy, is completely waterproof again with this waterproof material. And it goes all the way down the side as well. So the side of your bag doesn't get wet. The only downside I'd say of these side pouches is they're not very big. 
but there's still ample room for putting in my f I usually put my first aid kit in the side pouches and my food as well so it's easily accessible on the bottom of the bag this is I think this is brilliant on this bag is stitched on that waterproof thick waterproof material again and it goes all the way around and it also has a one inch one of, well two inch lip there which again means you can dump it on soaking wet ground and it keeps the bottom of the bag completely dry which I think is fantastic and a lot of backpacks are lacking this I think most backpacks, outdoor backpacks, should have a waterproof base to them yes you can hang it up on a tree if you wish to but again that's extra effort where you've got to tie those extra knots and things like that it's easy to just dump it on the floor and it doesn't get wet another downside of this backpack is the straps they're very simple and it does have a waist belt here but it's not padded it is just simply a nylon strap with a clip which does help ease the uh, load a bit but can rub on you the straps themselves relatively thin but again this bag is all about simplicity for me guys this pack is probably one of the best packs you can get as a beginner if you're getting into bushcraft or just general hiking for beginners uh, but also for the simplicity factor it's probably one of the most uh, easily laid out backpacks that i've seen just one big bucket pouch dump all your gear in there and away you go. So very good if you need to go off on a fast day trip and you've not planned it very well, you need to dump all your gear in there, that's what this is ideal for. You can modify backpacks how you want guys, it's up to you. I've just added these straps and you could probably add some straps on the bottom down here as well, but I wouldn't sew into that bottom pad because again that it would start to draw moisture up through the holes of where you've um, made for the stitching. On to the next pack. Okay, so after I uh, used that BW uh, German military bag for quite a while, I did so much research and so much looking on the internet, and it took me a hell of a lot of time to dig out this. This is a Dutch surplus Air Force backpack. It's a 25 litres. It's perfect for a day pack, and let me show you why. So first things first, you can see that it's really uh, easily accessible. You've got simple plastic clips here at the front, and the side pouches are nice and obvious and for me they're very tall which I wanted in a day pack I wanted tall ones uh, I didn't necessarily want wide ones this uh, was a big uh, selling point for me a big buying point uh, they're just simple pop rivets or pop catches to open the side pouch and the main thing for me is I can fit my one litre canteen in that side pouch with the stainless steel nesting bottle as well they can both sit they can both sit inside each other like that and I also keep the lid to it and the spork as well and the uh, bottle holder there so that all fits in one side pouch so I've got my whole cook system in one side pouch and that was something I was really trying to do with a backpack is to be able to keep, keep all my whole cook system in one one area so practicality is key that all slots in like that nice and easy and then simple and there's so much space still, just clip the pop rivets like that, job done. On the other side pouch is where I keep all my food, I'm not going to get it out, but you guys will know the old test tube bottles are in here, I'm actually going to make a little container for them to make it easier to store them. Um, and my uh, cleaning bit, uh, cleaning cloth there, portable mini travel towel, first aid kit is also in here as well, it's down there, and that's again easily accessible guys, all about easy access for me. You've got the tie, pull tie here for the main compartment, Again, I just put a bit of uh, red deer antler for aesthetics reasons. Uh, but you can see from the front here, actually, it's almost like molly webbing with uh, metal eyelets. And I've actually tried with mini carabiners. I can fit loads of mini carabiners on these eyelets and hang stuff from them, and it's all over the backpack. So there's so many points on it that you can tie out gear, which I think is really, really handy. So you can pop open this, and underneath is my shamag, or shamag. Um, and that's, if I take that out, that's actually, you can see the issue number there, this is 1993. Parrot Work, don't know what that is, but it's got the issue number as well there. And they, these are elasticated straps, so you could put a map under here, you could put a small pillow under here, maybe a hat or some clothing, um, or you could put a kneeling mat, sometimes I put my kneeling mat in there so that it keeps it waterproof if it rained on the top. But for the moment I just tuck my shamag in like that, nice and easy access, again, awesome. Little toggle there open the main compartment I've done this before in a video you guys have seen this bag but there's loads of gear in here at the moment this is what I love about this pack is there's actually one two three four compartments in the main compartment the most important for me thing for me for a day pack was I wanted it to have separate compartments so that I could get to gear easier 
on an overnighter you've got a bit more time generally to get your gear out so it doesn't matter if you have a big bucket pouch whereas on a day trip generally you don't have as much time and it's you know time is of the essence and you'd like to get a campfire going maybe you want it to cook up some food um, so again compartment having compartments just makes that your life a little bit easier so uh, in this compartment here is basically my fire lighting gear so i have my tinder pouch uh, i have also some cordage some paracord in this bag here and my torches my head torches just in case i do get lost or if i do do an overnight i keep my torches in there in this other side compartment here you probably can't see it well guys but you can see that it's split in half there this is where i can fit and this is awesome as well my 10 centimeter zebra billy my billy can which is in um, my sami style pouch which tim from blue angelical made me that fits perfectly in that pouch there and again it keeps to the structure of the bag you'd be amazed it's 25 liters but you'd be amazed how much you can get into this pack even a pattern 58 osprey bottle goes on top of the billy can and there's still room in this compartment at the back i keep all my knives so generally just my knives in their sheath i keep my uh my gloves and just any any bits that I need to get easy easy fast access to. Similar to the German military backpack, there is a little section at the back with pop catches, pop rivets, and a real thick, I'm not gonna get it out, but a big thick square piece of foam for the structure of the backpack and to keep it soft against your back. But also again, multiple uses guys, you can use it as a kneeling pad to then when you're lighting your fire or just pre prepping food or something like that and you don't wanna get wet. And another thing I love about this, really huge, big D loop here to just hang it you can hang it from a tree and you can pick it up look from the floor really easily again it's so simple another drawback of the pack though is this strap here you can't really tie out anywhere this is actually your waist clip this one clips to this one over here like that and that makes it your waist clip but you can if you wanted to get it out of the way clip it in this clip up here alternatively that just keeps it out of the way this, this, the strapping's actually really unique on this, I've never seen it on a bag. It's, it's like wings, it's like bat wings, and that's because it's an Air Force bag, it's for the Air Force, it's designed for the Air Force. Underneath, there is like an ID card and the issue number. I've still got lots of customising to do to this pack, I've got some patches that I want to put on it, but for me guys, it is the number one day pack, and I love it. I've actually had this pack years and years and years, and it's been really, really well used. This is a Eurohike Pathfinder 35. This is much more suited for those of you out there who do a lot more hiking and not, not necessarily bushcraft, although you could use this for bushcraft. This is much more practical for hiking and I'll explain why. I have made some modifications to it, again, which I'll explain, explain in a minute. But size-wise, it's 35 litres. It's got simple two clips to open the uh, top lid. Again, a toggle, just a pull toggle. And inside, take that out, it's a sleeping bag. Again, one big bucket pouch inside the main compartment. There is also a secondary pouch back here, which is elasticated, and that's for your water bladder or your water hydration system, which has, and this is specifically for hiking, like I said, a hole at the back here, which goes through a hole, and they've even put a water drop on it back here, where your tube comes through uh, that you can put your hydration bladder in. Uh, or your Camelback or something like that, whichever brand you use. That, that can then tuck down so that when you're wearing it, your tube can come down here and you can just drink straight from it there. So it's much more customised for the hiker, the, the person who does a lot of hiking, a lot of trekking, where you need to keep hydrated while you're walking. So that's the main compartment. It's got two side compartments here, only small, but enough for phones, compasses, uh, snacks, you know, your trail mix and things like that. And what I've done on all the zips of the pack is I've actually added paracord because it makes it much more easily accessible to get to and you don't have to fiddle around trying to find a zip. You just grab the bit of paracord and pull that. It makes life so much easier. So little tip for you there, guys. If you have lots of paracord left over, just cobra weave it. Um, I think it's on Bushcraft Camp Update 2 I talk about cobra weaving paracord. It's how you can store loads of paracord in a small amount of space. Um, but I've also got paracord up here. This is the back compartment, top lid, as I call it, a lid compartment in the top of the, uh, the backpack. Again, you can store your map, maybe, compasses, things like that. There's also a map pocket, specific map, map pocket here at the front, and that fits one of the Ordnance Survey maps perfectly in that compartment there, and it's designed to keep it nice and flush to the bag so your map doesn't crease up. Again, this is why this pack's specific for hiking. Uh, another reason why this is hiking specific is because there's an adjustable velcro loop up the top here 
and another D-shaped loop down here and that's because that's for your hiking pole or your walking pole which you can slide through the top there and it sits there on the back of your pack so again nice and easily accessible so you can pull it out when you're tired going up those steep slopes and then just use your walking pole very very adaptable and customizable there's lots of adaption points and tie up points to this uh, which I've adjusted I've put three carabiners on this and they, they're just simple D loops here and you just clip carabiners on and you can clip absolutely anything onto these but I've just put three carabiners for the sake of showing you guys uh, onto here but you can you know hang your water bottle from here you can hang a jacket maybe or, or a raincoat or something like that from there plenty of options that you can hang from there another reason why this is definitely more suited to hiking is it's super padded really really well padded okay the shoulder straps here are nearly half an inch over half an inch thick very strong the back foam padding here is very, very thick. You can see that the structure of the bag, if I let it sit like that, it just stays upright naturally. Okay, so it's super padded for those long hikes. You don't get back ache. It does have a kidney belt or a waist belt here. Again, very adjustable and nice thick padding around the kidneys, around the side of your hips here. So this is certainly designed for the hiker in mind. Underneath as well, in this part here, this small part is a rain cover which folds out like that and then covers the whole bag. Obviously there's nothing in this bag so it's a bit flimsy, but it can cover the whole bag, this rain pouch. And you can still walk with it on because it's got these clips here, which these toggles which go into the D-loops on the bag, specifically designed for the rain cover. And then your, but you can carry on walking and your bag is completely sealed and waterproof. Now, another reason guys why this is designed for the hiker in mind and the mountain hiking and things like that Look how bright this is, okay, this is for emergency purposes. If you were hiking on a high ridge or a mountain and you hurt yourself and you call for aid, you need to be seen, you want to be found. You need bright colours, okay, why do you think a lot of hiking clothing when you go to hiking shops and walking shops is brightly coloured? You rarely see dull coloured hiking clothing and that's because if you're injured you need to be found by rescue services, you need to have bright clothing and that's why most of the hiking clothing is bright, hence why bright there and again the actual backpack itself if you look it's not dull olive green like the other ones drab green it's nice and red and most of the backpacks as well will be a brighter color but you can get green ones than drab olive and things like that so there's the hiking pack on to the next one okay guys probably one of the most if not the most popular bushcraft backpack out there um, is the Swedish LK35 this is a military surplus backpack. It's probably the backpack out there that's had the most modifications by people. People absolutely love these packs and they love modifying them. I've modified mine as well. Uh, and I'll show you some of the mods that I've done. It's got a steel frame here. Um, and this is not only to keep the rigidity of the backpack, uh, they also use these to carry radios, uh, the Swedish military. So they're kind of a radio uh, reconnaissance backpack. Um, they have hard straps here. Okay, so there's no padding as such, but the straps themselves, the way they're situated, help to spread the load on your back. Again, it's, it's an old backpack, guys, but it's so well made. All the military surplus stuff is made to last. It's bomb-proof. So you've got the normal, relatively thin straps here, but that doesn't matter because when you put this on, all the weight gets shifted to your hips. And that's because, especially if you buy one of these kidney belts, okay, similar to the Alice belts that you can get, um, and these just these are a modification. You just take the backpack off the frame and you attach to these to the frame down here. And this just sits on your hips. And when you loosen up these shoulder straps, it then sends all the weight onto your hips and you can walk for miles and miles and miles. And all that weight will be on your hips and it won't be on your shoulders and you won't get that classic neck and shoulder burn when you, that you get with some backpacks when you're walking for a long period of time. The opening of the strap is again really easily, it's just uh, little brass I believe toggles there and nylon straps, nylon webbings. Okay so there's no clips involved on this part. It's a big bucket pouch, 35 litre bag. This is quite interesting, the actual tensioning toggle of the backpack. I've never seen a design like this and it's very unique to the Swedish LK35. But you just slide this up to tighten it and you push this little toggle in and what it does is as you push that in it squeezes against the actual cordage here and it pinches it close and that's a very simple, easy to use, albeit quite heavy, but again, practical, practicality wise and uniqueness, it's very unique to this backpack. Inside is one massive bucket pouch, which again, you, the shape doesn't sit right, uh, unless you put a bit of foam in here 
again which protects it, waterproofs it, protects all your gear inside as well and protects the edge of the backpack to stop it getting damaged. Uh, but I would recommend putting a bit of foam in there and again you've got so much room in there you can just dump all your gear or you can store it efficiently if you're that sort of person that you know which get part, you know, how to store your gear in a bucket backpack, bucket pouch then you can store it nice and easily. It does have a secondary pouch here, which again you could put you could put another bit of foam in there, but it wouldn't matter because the steel's on the other side, the, the metal frame. But you could put any of your bits in there, whatever you want, guys. It's the world's your oyster. One of the drawbacks I find is it's not very efficient if you want to pack away quickly. You do have to sort of get your toggles down, pull them in, pull them out. It's not I, I prefer clips, although these would be much more durable than clips would. Now one of the modifications that I've done to this backpack is I have added side pouches but rather than stitch them directly to the bag I've actually got these, I believe these are Condor side pouches and these are released by pop catches there and if I turn the bag to the side I've actually stitched my own molly webbing on the side there so that not only can I attach this Condor pouch here but I can also attach uh, carabiners if I want to and just hang something off there I can attach you know, a, a walking pole, I can attach my axe, anything like that. So that's the reason that I wanted a detachable side pouch because there's times where I was using this bag as a day pack and I didn't need the side pouches. So I thought if I stitched on some webbing, molly style, uh, just like that, a bit of nylon webbing, I just figured that at least then I've got a detachable side pouch, which this also has molly webbing here, which can go around a belt if I need to, where these clip in there, this can sit on my belt and sit on the side of my belt like that. It could be my first aid kit, it could be anything like that. This is a simple side pouch which just opens actually relatively bigly, big and I could even fit my water bottle in there. It can't quite hold my one litre water bottle but it can hold my 750ml um, Os Black Osprey, Pat 58 Osprey, Osprey bottle. Don't know guys, maybe you guys out there uh, who have LK35s have different suggestions. Uh, I think it's a fantastic pack. I have stopped using it now uh, as my main uh, overnight backpack purely because I'll explain uh, about my snug pack stamina coming up next. Um, I'll explain why. Um, I'm just not a fan of bucket backpacks. I've tried them. I've tried it with the German BW German military one, and I've tried it with the Swedish LK35. Um, I just don't really get on with them. I find, uh, although you can organise the stuff in your pack. Uh, when you go out to the woods and you pack, you know you go out and you, you've got everything right I can open it up if it rains I've got my raincoat at the top uh, if I want to start a fire first I put my fire lighting gear near the top if I want to put my tarp up I'll put my tarp gear near the top but inevitably for me anyway things do change when you're out in the woods um, and it's never quite packed the same and then I do find that I'm always digging around trying to look for something so that's one of the main reasons really why I've stopped using bucket, pa bucket pouches in, in, in backpacks and I've started to use more backpacks that have compartments just a personal preference really guys, I'm sure you out, the guys out there absolutely love your LK35s, the ones that have them, and you swear by them, and that's completely fine, it is a fantastic backpack, but it's all down to personal preference. I'm just making this video really um, to maybe give you guys some hints and suggestions if you're out there and you're a beginner, maybe looking for a backpack, or if you're a bit bored of your backpack and it's you know maybe aching your shoulders or you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, that's the only reason I'm making this video. I'm not saying you have to have this pack, you must use this pack. Um, or this pack is the best pack, you've got to go out and get it. Because at the end of the day, the, the best pack is the pack that suits you the best. It's not the one that the, the most famous person in the world is wearing. You know, it, it's the one that suits you the best and fits you the best. You could either force yourself to look good, or you can actually enjoy yourself out in the woods and have a comfortable experience. And to me, that's more important, is that comfortable experience, not about the looks. Although it is a pretty sexy backpack. Okay, so we're going to finish off the video, guys, with my favourite overnight backpack or long trip backpack. Uh, those of you who've been on the channel for a while will know that I've been using this pack for a long time and I have really good faith in it. Uh, this is the Snug Pack Stamina. I do like the Snug Pack as a company, I'm not sponsored by them. I just think they make very good gear, a British company, and it's built to last. They have made stuff for the military as well. This is not military surplus, but it is a very good pack. So the Snug Pack Stamina is 40 litres. Um, and this for me is ideal because it's got lots of different compartments uh, but it also has that main bucket pouch in the middle as well. Uh, so just looking at it at the top here, it's got a bit of Velcro there if you want to put your uh, patches on there. I've got some patches coming as well by the way for TA Outdoors so I'll be sticking some patches on there. Uh, the, everything works for me for this bag. I stick my axe handle, my axe handle goes down here 
and the axe head sits up under the bag like that. Um, you will have seen it in some of, my, some of my previous videos and that just fits perfectly. Um, it also has this bungee cord at the front with D-loops so you know I can attach it and make sure that my axe is really really secure. I've got paracord uh, cobra weaved on some of these D-loops down at the bottom here and there's probably about a metre, maybe a metre and a half of um, paracord on each of these so it's just that extra bit of cordage, cordage should I need it in an emergency situation. Okay let's start with the top. So in the lid, there's a lid compartment up here and it's massive. I've got cordage, I've got all sorts in here. I've actually got a, a pillow, a uh, self-inflating pillow in the top here as well. But this is huge and it's really, really easy. Again, like my hiking backpack, um, I put weaved in some paracord as well again, Cobra weaved it there on the zip to make it much easier to get to the zip. I want things to be fast and easy access. So rather than have to fill around and try and find the zip under this tucked up cover here, I can just grab the paracord, pull it to the side and it's nice and easy. So that's that pack. Then, clips to open, nice and fast, again, easy. And then if we just flip this round, it's got a smaller compartment just in here, in the reverse side of the lid. Hopefully you guys can see that. Again, a bit of paracord there, easy opening. It's not massive, but it's ideal for phones and keys like, and things like that, so it's slightly more secure. Main compartment, again, just a toggle there. I have put in some foam, and there is stuff in there, so sorry guys, but you might not be able to see very well big bucket compartment in there. I've also got side pouches and I've got these extra compartments here where I can put the most important bits that I need. Uh, but big side pouch where I generally put my tarp, I can fit my sleeping bag in there uh, and any extra layers of clothing and things like that will go in there. Uh, this has also been designed with hiking in mind because on the side here, you guys probably can't see this, there is a uh, bit of Velcro there, an elasticated compartment built for a hydration bladder, which again, and this is pretty neat, through this flap here, you can open up and your hydration bladder can come out where my finger is there. Okay, so hiking is it's built with hiking in mind as well. So it's a much more universal backpack, really. It has large elasticated side pouches here which can fit my litre bottle, uh, my 750 um, canteen bottle as well. They're nice and wide. If you look how wide they are here, you can fit so much gear in there and it's nice to have wide pouches as well as tall. On the back here, super padded straps. I mean, this is very similar to the hiking bag. So it's almost like a hiking bushcraft bag crossover and that's what I really like because I do do a lot of walking. Uh, so super thick padded shoulder straps, all adjustable. This, every strap on this bag is adjustable, which is fantastic. So nice thick shoulder straps and almost very similar to the hiking bag I showed you earlier, the day pack. Uh, it actually has these same padded hip belt here the hip strap but they're much longer so they snug around the side of your hips as well and lovely large center clip okay so you can still shift all of that like the LK35 you can still shift all of that weight onto your hips and stop your shoulders from aching at the bottom here there is four nylon straps which I have I haven't brought them with me but I have got some uh, long webbing straps again with a buckle so that I can put a bedroll under here or a sleeping bag or a wool blanket Okay, there's also two D-loops here, so if I had walking poles, I could put walking poles in them, or I can tie off of these D-loops with a bit of webbing, again, to carry a sleeping pad or a bed roll or something like that. Underneath, we have another zip, and a really super large, this actually is a rain cover, but it can cover the bag and another backpack as well, I've tried it. It's so stretchy, if you look, and that can just tuck under and literally tuck over the whole bag really quickly. It's, it's oversized basically, so it makes it really fast if it's tipping down with rain. Look, bosh, super fast. And I've put my camera bag under here as well. It's got so much space. I try to look for backpacks that are practical, uh, that are comfortable, that are durable, that have easy, fast access, and that are built to last. That's really all a, all a, a sort of bushcraft backpack needs to be for you. It needs to be comfortable and you need to be happy with it. And if you're not happy with it, keep looking because there are bags out there that will suit your needs. If you're a hiker, you probably wouldn't need any of the uh, bushcraft day packs that I have. You would go for more of a hiking bag. Uh, if you're a bushcrafter or a woodsman, you might need bags that have nice side pouches, uh, side slots where you could slot an axe or a front slot where you could slot an axe. So this next part has to be one of the best selling points of this bag for me. Uh, and it's actually what made me purchase it in the end. I don't know about you guys, but when you're wearing a backpack, I find it really frustrating when I've got straps flapping about all over the place, and I do have it actually on my Dutch Air Force backpack. It doesn't bother me so much, but after a while it can get quite annoying, uh, and they're just dangling by your legs and they're flapping around and it's really annoying. And what Snugpack have come up with is actually a really simple, easy design, but it's literally just a bit of Velcro each side of the strap like this. So it's almost like a T-shape, and all you do is you just 
So imagine this strap is normally flapping around like this. But you just roll it on itself, and hopefully you guys can see this, I'm just rolling it up like that. And then the Velcro simply folds on itself like that, and it just sits there. And now that strap is completely tucked in, and it has it on every single one of these. It's got it on the side strap here, it's got it on the two front straps, uh, it's got it on the shoulder straps down here at the bottom. It's literally got it everywhere, it's got it on the hip uh, straps as well. A, such a simple but super effective idea. Absolutely love this pack, it's my baby. You're, you're a man, you're the man. Weirdo. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, thanks very much if you're still watching, thanks for sticking around. Um, that was just an insight really into the bags that I've had over the years and the drawbacks and the benefits of each bag. And at the end of the day guys, I don't think you know there is no perfect bag as such, there's just the bag that suits you and the bag that suits your situation. Don't get forced into getting a bag that you don't really need. Um, I think it's worth looking around, you don't have to go for the most expensive bag, just go for the one that suits you guys. At the end of the day, we're all out here to enjoy ourselves in the outdoors really and you want something that's comfortable, practical, relatively good value for money and durable and for me also accessibility that's a real key thing for me. Thanks very much for watching guys if you've enjoyed the video please hit the like button uh, and do subscribe I'm getting really good views on the channel at the moment and it'd be great if you could uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel please do and that way you can click the little bell notification and get updated every time I upload a new video. I do have some overnighters planned coming up really soon Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.